In this video, we're going to look at velocity time graphs. And this graph here shows the velocity time for a car on a straight track. And we're asked to describe the motion of the car. Let's start at the very beginning. At time t equals 0, the velocity is 0. So we know that the car is starting off at rest. But then the velocity is increasing. So we know it's accelerating. So it's speeding up. However, the acceleration isn't constant. It's not speeding at a steady rate. So we, this is where we use the fact that the gradient of a velocity time graph should equal acceleration. Let's see how the gradient changes. So the steepness of the graph, as you can see, is decreasing with time. So that means the acceleration is decreasing. This is not to say that it's decelerating, it's not slowing down, it's still speeding up for the whole question um, until the very end, but its rate of acceleration is decreasing. Okay, and then finally towards the end, as you can see, it's leveled off at a constant speed of 15 meters per second. Part B of the question, we're asked to calculate the acceleration at time t equals 10 seconds. Again, we're going to use the fact that the gradient of a velocity time graph is equal to acceleration. So unfortunately, this is where I see some students make some mistake, which is they just read off the value at 10 seconds and then just divide, for example, in this case, 11 meters per second by 10 seconds to get the acceleration like this. This is incorrect because what this is doing is figuring out the average acceleration from 0 to 10 seconds. That's not what the question is asking for. It's asking for the acceleration at 10 t equals 10 seconds. So what we do is draw a tangent at this point. We've got the steepness at 10 seconds. So draw a nice long tangent like this. And then we're going to do change in y over change in x. So I'm going to pick some points from this tangent. So let's use these two points here, Okay, the ones I've circled. And so if we get up for the first one, y2 is going to be 17 meters per second. And the corresponding coordinate, the second coordinate there is 19 seconds minus 5, which is where we start off at the bottom left there. And that corresponds to two, 0 seconds. And this gives us an acceleration of 0 0.63 meters per second squared. Okay, part C of the question, I'm asked to determine the displacement of the car over 40 seconds. Okay, I'm going to use a different property of the graph now, which is the area under the graph. The area under a velocity time graph is equal to displacement. So I'm going to have to figure out the area under this curve here. So the best way to do this is to chop this up into a bunch of triangles, trapeziums, and rectangles. Okay, so first of all, we've got a triangle in this part here, which is clearly an approximation. So that's going to be the area of this triangle is going to be 11 times 10 divided by 2. That gives me 55 meters. Then we have a trapezium. So that's going to be 11 plus 14 times 10 divided by 2. So that gives me 125 meters. Repeat this again for the next trapezium. So that's 11, uh, 14 plus 15 times 10 divided by 2. That's 145 meters. And finally, the last section, I'm going to use that as a rectangle. So that's just 15 times 10. And that gives me 150 meters. Add them all up together, we get 475 meters. Now, this is an approximation because, as you can see, we've missed some tiny areas there, which I've shaded in blue now. So what I've got here is the 475 is clearly an underestimate because we missed all that area there. If you want to avoid that error, you'll have to use more triangles and more trapeziums. So that will make your answer more accurate. However, the problem is this is obviously going to take longer. So you need to find the right balance. Okay, there is another method for determining the area under a graph. And that's to count squares under the curve. So let's look at this box here. Okay, that's 5 by 10. So that means each of those boxes has an area of 5 times 10, which is 50 meters. Now we're going to count how many of those boxes we have under the curve. So let's start counting. We've got a number of whole squares we have. We've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. That's the number of whole squares. And then this one over here, that's almost an, a whole square, the eighth one. So what I'll do is I'll pretend by adding this tiny section here that those two add, add up together, give us the eighth square. And then if we add these two, we get the ninth square because they're roughly adding up to a whole square there or a box. Um, and then the bottom left here, that's I would say is almost four fifths of a square. The reason is because of this area that we're missing and this area that we've included, add up together and they kind of cancel out. So that's 4 fifth, which is 0 0.8 of a whole box. So that means we've got 9.8 boxes. Each one is worth 50 meters. So that's 490 meters.